Welcome back. Welcome back to the big boy. Having a look at Battles to the Rhine. A lock and load tactical system uh, expansion module for the Heroes of Normandy, which is one of the largest modules. Uh, I haven't even uh, punched all of it yet. I've played it several times, and I, I'm not necessarily a big uh, proponent of playing tactical World War II stuff. I just, I just, I play it, I enjoy it, but I'm more interested in tactical stuff from the modern era. But I find myself more and more lately playing a lot more of the lock and load tactical World War II era games, modules, and expansions, and this one's no exception. Uh, I've seen that uh, a lot of these scenarios that are being developed are pretty tight. And I, I think I posted a little bit uh, on Facebook about this, just some images and bits and pieces, and actually probably called it Scenario 1. It's actually Scenario 2. It's Bloodstained Bocage. A little bit of a counterattack thing, July 11th. Representative, of course. These are not uh, exact scenarios or historical scenarios, but it's, this is meant to represent the... Uh, uh, a counterattack that was uh, attempting to prevent the Allies from capturing St. Lo. So it's the Panzerlia Division running into the area. And here's what's kind of cool and or interesting about this particular scenario. And I think it might actually be the first scenario I've ever played where it's all armor versus a combined arms infantry armor uh, force. And so we had two maps. There was a the... the uh, uh, German started over here. I was about to say Axis, but it's the, the German forces were going to start started over here uh, on the edge of this map, and they had to do the run up. Uh, they got seven turns to get uh, every enemy unit away, uh, two hexes or more away from uh, the the main road here on this map. So you've basically got to clear the route, right? Uh, and they failed. That's <laughs> just that's the end of it, right there. We can uh, pack it up, but uh, you know, no, it didn't fail by much. There's one AT gun left uh, within two hexes, and it's any Allied unit uh, within two hexes. So technically, I believe the uh, Germans lost because it says uh, clear all good order American units from within two hexes of the road. Uh, th th this this road here. Now, the early action, which really centered around here, the closing uh, up to the infantry that were here, I figured I'd, I'd stagger my defense and make it a, d a defense in depth. So I had some units here, had a tank here, a tank here, and the final tank uh, retreated back into this uh, wheat field or whatever it is. And then a few units kind of scattered around here. Uh, and that seemed to work actually pretty well. They got chomped up pretty hard at the start because there were uh, seven uh, AFVs on the approach. And so that's a lot of firepower if the dice rolls go well. And so it wasn't until we got into this area here where we got a little bit of a Mexican standoff, as they like to call it, in this area where we had uh, a, a M10 here, and these Panzer Fives and Panzer Fours were both in on both sides of the the the, the bacage, and we had uh, squads here that got overrun, or um, yeah, overrun is the word. And then we had other other units up here, so it, it was really tight. And in fact, the Germans had to, all the Germans had to do was shake this unit. And uh, they did not, <laughs> they did not shake that unit. They could not get a, uh, a shot off that could make a difference, which was disappointing. Uh, these guys had actually moved and you would think with the plus two bonus and all the rest of it going on that we would be able to make the hit, but because they assault moved, basically negated that movement bonus. If you know the game, there's, uh, it's easy to shoot. Uh, weapons teams and infantry that are running around and it's a little bit harder to to peg vehicles when they're moving so or if they or if they have been moving as well so anyway really enjoyed the scenario surprise i thought it was going to be a walkover for the germans but as as the turns clicked on and uh the germans lost one or two tanks it took uh it took the wind out of their sails and they lost you know uh, just uh, under 
half of their firepower <coughs> and that seemed to turn the tide for them and uh, really uh, allow the, the the Americans to eke out uh, a win. I would call this a, a delayed, uh, a, a fighting delay or a, a retreat uh, that uh, they, they bounced the uh, counterattack off uh, basically, but the, the reality would be that if all these tanks were going to be moving off the board to head into St. Low or to attack other units. Clearly, half a dozen tanks or four tanks would probably take care of business. Uh, they would have wrapped this up if there were one more turn in the scenario. But that's what makes lock and load scenario so great is the not just the t time tension that you have, but also the scenario design. There's a lot of thoughtfulness that goes into that. So good job from lock and load. I believe Devon did most of the uh, scenarios in this particular module, so I think they were all pretty, well, I shouldn't say they're all very, very well done, because I've only played one of them, but I'm sure they are uh, equally good, and I'll be looking forward to playing some more in the near future. So I thought I'd uh, share that with you real quick. Had a lot of fun with it, and uh, played pretty snappy as well, so uh, it's always, always cool to, you know, run around the panzers and go brum brum. All right, cheers.